2011 Chevrolet it's the Equinox. It has a battery draw intermittently. We can see about every four minutes this thing pulls about 70 milliamps on average. And it's been doing this, I've had it hooked up for about an hour and it's pretty consistent every four minutes. Otherwise it sits resting here about 10 milliamps. I see all this hash down here on the screen. Uh, that's from the uh, security light here on the dash. I don't know if you guys will see it, but it blinks there. And, uh, you know, if we change the speed on this, it just looks hashy. Like the hash sling and slash here from Spongebob. Uh, if we stick it here, you can see, you know, every time that light beeps or turns on, lights don't beep, you ding dong. But uh, we'll get, here, let's get it here where we can see it. It's not so cruddy. But every time the light flashes. So that's why we see when we slow it down to, you know, five minutes. We'll see that it looks like it's, you know, a lot of hysteria. So... How do you fix that? What I'm hoping for is I'm hoping service data is right. So GM has a service bulletin out or a PIP, uh, they call it on this little guy. Uh, engine crank no start to do to discharge battery, parasitic current draw. And I always check service bulletins because you never know. And here it says, uh, this may be due to an HVAC control module intermittently waking up and creating a 70 milliamp draw. And I think we'll see, I'll wait for it to go back into a draw over there. And we'll see, it is around 70 milliamps. Um, it wants us to uh, check and see if 70 milliamp draw is consistent. If it's not, uh, pull the HVAC BAT 20 amp fuse, number 12, located in the instrument panel. Wait for it to go to sleep, see if it's eliminated. And they have an updated software for it. So that'd be really interesting. I've never run across this. And if this fixes it, I never would have been able to find it efficiently without uh, some service data. So let's see. I'll wait for this going to draw again. I'll show you guys what it's doing. And then we'll, uh, we'll do one of these. We'll cross our little nuggets and pull that out and see if it's right. There she goes, folks. So she's about 70 million, 69er-ish when it light blinks. So 66 to 69er. Uh, and then it goes on for a short period of time here and then it'll turn back off. And then go back down to 10 milliamps. And it continues the cycle about every four minutes. So I'm curious to know if this service bulletin applies. So. Uh, let's yank out the fuse. Over here on the passenger side. Footwell it said HVAC battery, which I saw here. Number 12. And number 12 goes. I figure, always got to figure out the maze, folks. Uh, 10, 11, 12. So it is. Let's see where we're at. 1, 2, 3, 4. Up. 1, 2, 3, 4 is a 20 amper. Oh, she comes. We'll do that right here. We'll close the door, lock everything up, and redo our test. All right, well, make sure she's locked. Because you kind of try to leave the car like the customer would leave it. Uh, evidently, this car sits a lot, she tells me. Uh, it's sat all winter, but they were having this problem prior to it sitting this winter. So there, we've got that. We're gonna, we're back in line with it. Of course, now we're well over 200 milliamps so we'll go up to our 10 amp scale right now we're drawing about a half an amp so after this car goes to sleep in about 10 minutes i've discovered so we're going to set it i'm going to put it back on the 100 milliamp scale because i really don't care what happens in, above and beyond that and i'll let this go and then we'll come back and check it we'll let it do a full five minute sweep after it drops down to 10 milliamps and see if that problem has been fixed finally went to sleep I almost want to sleep waiting for it to go to sleep. Uh, what we'll do, we'll just start a fresh screen here. And then we wait. Oh my goodness. Woo! Gotcha. Tell me what, making a coffee? Watching Facebook. Watching Facebook. How do you know? I was looking for a gift for you. Wait, you were? A gift? A G-I-F or a G-I-F-T? T. A gift for what? It's not even my birthday. You're full of sugar. I'm making you coffee. Just wow. thinking about you, taking care of you. <laughs> You're well, so, you got me. I still wore my boots. Wait, I did. <laughs> I don't think they're tall enough. No, probably not. <laughs> I'm so tired today. No, it's, uh, a, it's only 9.15. Nap. Nap time. I'm like this. My mother, I'm like... <laughs> you, know, you know how you get when you get like that? What are you doing? Waiting. Yeah, it's like every time I drive more than 15 minutes, oh, like I can't. I hear you. Yeah. 
I hear you. Sometimes riding to work, I'm like, I wish they had a rest area in this eight miles. <laughs> Your what? My eight mile drive to work. Well, what are you doing? Waiting. For? For results. You haven't figured out yet? Almost. Maybe. I'll come in and gloat in a little while if I do. <laughs> are you going to froth my milk? Mm. With your frother? Oh, it's all. It's too hot. Oh. It's too hot. Oh. You don't have a pour over? I really prefer a pour over. Here you have a pour over. No, get out of here. <laughs> uh, we'll be back. Right, we better go see where we're at. Hey, look at that. We filled almost a full five minutes. Let's see what it's doing. Anything funny? Oh, well, we dipped. We might have fixed it. <laughs> Because usually within a five minute period, like I say, it was pretty consistent every four minutes. So, what time is it now? 109 on here. It's not IRL. So, we'll uh, keep a note where that little high spike there is. Not a big deal. We'll uh, come back here in about four minutes and see if it did anything. Then, to be definitive, I guess we could stick that fuse back in and the draw should come back. Let's see, what's it been? 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. It's four minutes. See our mark there has moved over and no high action. Like I say, just the hysteria here, which is just the light flashing. Every time the little light bleeps on there on the dash. On, on, yeah. Uh, I'm not real good at timing it. I'm trying to look at two things at once, but yeah, every time that little light flickers, you know, you get that, which is normal to be expected. So, let's uh, throw the fuse back in it and um, make 100% sure we're correct. Fuse is back in it, and we're sitting at a steady 470 some milliamps, 200, and it gets down to this 171 milliamps pretty quick. So we'll let it sit here, and I do believe uh, that I was, even when I was waiting for it to time out, I was seeing it turn on every four minutes on top of the 170 milliamp draw. So uh, maybe instead of waiting, you know, for it to fully die down, we'll see what happens here in a four minute period. And we should see, you know, uh, 70 amps on top of that. Well, plenty of time has lapsed and now no draw with the fuse back in. Oh, but I got a confession. When I was down yonder here in the Chattahoochee looking for the hoochie coochie in the fuse box, I noticed this. Aftermarket wiring, son of a mother. And I said, you know what, well I'm right here before we go yank out the fuses out of the HVAC. I said, let me yank these two fuses out that who the heck knows where they go to. Just some kind of aftermarket crap. Not a remote start, just something tapped in, so uh, I feel like I've lied to you, and now I'm being exposed. So what I need to do is set you down, and I know it was going to give us some inconclusive results on a test if this happened to be the draw, but I was thinking, boy, we're really onto something with that 70 milliamper, so I'm going to stick them back in. Even though I don't know where they go, just this red and blue wire that goes somewhere is this way, which you can tell a real pro put these in. Got some vampire clamps black and red wire and a pink wire which are two predominantly colors in a GM that are power they go somewhere up here up so like an idiot we gotta do this again Anyhow, sorry for lying to you didn't really lie I just didn't disclose the whole story I just figured hey while you're down there fella and you see that monkey business just yank them out I didn't think that they would be connected to anything that would cause an intermittent draw and it fit the criteria way too well with that whole HVAC module thing and who knows maybe by removing the fuse from the HVAC module and plugging it back in got it out of its crazy loop but I don't know it seemed kind of weird to me because they did say they put a battery in it you know had the same results <sighs> and we wait well, I'm waiting for this little guy to time out and giving it its five minutes to see if it repeats itself. Now, uh, I'm firing up the old tech line connect, letting her go through updates. I think I'm going to go through and update the HVAC module just because uh, it fit the criteria way too well. 
and perhaps you know removing the fuse from the HVAC module, putting it back in, you know, reset it so to speak. Uh, I've never ran across this on one of these cars, but it just seemed to fit the criteria like you know to a T. And I'm going to talk to the customer about those about the aftermarket wiring. I doubt the lady even knows about it. Uh, I know she's only had this car for a couple years. Um, maybe it was a buy here, pay here thing had a you know a, a G, GPS tracker or something on it. So I think what we'll do. I'm gonna talk with her if she knows nothing about the aftermarket stuff. We're gonna leave those fuses out because you know clearly it doesn't seem to affect it. And then we're gonna go through and do the update on the HVAC module and possibly the BCM because they also had a battery draw concern for the body control module. But I don't think it didn't really fit our uh, criteria. Okay, Equinox uh, 2GNAL at the beginning of the VIN? Yep, that's right. Okay. I've got some Mickey Mouse wiring under the dash, and I don't think the sunroof's factory. I could be wrong. It says all, all except sunroof. It was not factory. So no sunroof from the factory. Correct. Okay, thank you, sir. Yep. Okay. Yep, bye. Low battery. Boom. Low battery, she says. Put her on the hook. I was curious, where did them wires go? And I see they go up. So I unhooked them, and I said, well, something ain't going to work. So I looked up and I said, you know what? Something ain't right. I don't think that sunroof's factory. And sure as sugar, the sunroof didn't work. And guess what? I put the fuses in and the sunroof works. So those fuses are for the aftermarket sunroof. So we're going to leave them in and we're not going to call the lady. We're still going to update the HVAC control module. Now, those are hooked to a full-time power and then a key-on source. So I doubt there's any kind of monkey business going on up there on the sunroof area. Uh, it does function. I did open and close it, but like I said, I could tell it's not an OEM GM sunroof. So I just double-checked with the dealer per VIN. I didn't see it listed on the build sheet, and I just wanted to be sure I wasn't reading it wrong. So we're going to proceed with programming the HVAC module, and I'm, then I'm going to charge the battery and give it back to the lady, and then I'll get back to you in a few months if I'm wrong. So yeah, it's got your classic aftermarket hole in the roof. They did a decent job on it, but I knew it wasn't. It wasn't the OG. I could tell by the switch. Uh, but like I say, it functions fine. So I don't want to throw it because you know how aftermarket crap is. But yeah, when you yank the fuses out, she quits. So anyhow, keys on. Let's update the HVAC if it needs an update. So this is pretty interesting, folks. Uh, I don't see the HVAC control module listed. Body module, UVCM, inertia, cluster. There's no HVAC module listed. I just double checked the service bulletin and the RPO code fits this completely. Um, this shouldn't make a difference. We got 11 Equinox selected. Um, so that's kind of bizarre. Why do we not show the HVAC control module? Just this remote heat, that's... Remote heat and air conditioning control module? I don't think that's it, folks. I'm gonna pop back into GDI. I mean, it should be listed under the HVAC control module. Um, I don't want this to take up one of my slots. I don't wanna pay for it if you don't have to. Um, I'm gonna go back in to the GDS and see, make sure GM calls it the HVAC module. I mean, that's pretty clear on the uh, service bulletin, that's what they're calling it, but. Um, so I popped back into the factory scan tool and indeed it is not an HVAC module on this. Uh, it is the remote heating and air conditioning control module. So, uh, like I said, RPO code and everything matches. I don't know what it was, but see something here. Uh, C67, Charlie 67 was our RPO code, which fit the uh, tech service bolt in. Um, so it's weird because they clearly call it an HVAC module. I can't say I've ever seen a remote heater air conditioning module, or at least if I have, I've never paid attention to it. Uh, I did pop in there and look. The last time it was programmed was back in 2010, so it must be when this car was new. So it should have an update. Foolishly, I didn't look to see if it did, um, and it does, so thankfully. <laughs> It does have an update. Uh, it's actually had a couple updates since um, since the start of it. it. Says there's no bulletin available, which is kind of curious. 
um, but here's our current part numbers, here's a new part number, you know, all three uh, portions of it are being updated. Um, so we're going to take and uh, let that go ahead and uh, do its update here. Uh, we'll take and um, double check. I'm going to double check the BCM update. I don't think that applies to this car. There was some of these cars apparently uh, that have the wrong programming in the BCM that allowed the backlighting on the dash to stay on even after the key was off. So I doubt we're having uh, you know any update there because you know clearly the backlighting shuts off. So I'll let this go through, do its thing, and then uh, I'm going to go back in the HVAC module, uh, relearn the HVAC doors, or see if there's any uh, programming there. We could look in service data to see what we have to do. And then uh, we'll take it from there, folks. So if I followed my own advice, I would have looked first under control module references. You guys remember that from a previous video. When you want to know what's going on with GM, how to set up a module. So under HVAC control system or HVAC system control module programming and setup, they clearly call it the remote heater and air conditioning control module. So even though we refer to it as a generic HVAC module, even they call it an HVAC module under SPS, so under our programming, it's called the remote heater and air conditioning control module. Uh, it makes you want to jump off a building. Anyhow, uh, it just tells us to go ahead and uh, do an update on it, follow on screen instructions, clear the codes, and then I think it says if there's an actuator replaced, uh, we have to recalibrate them. So we should be good just doing the update. It's taking forever. We'll go bug this is all. I got so much in the parking lot. It's freaking loaded out here. She's loaded. We got another Equinox out there, I think it is. Air tubes are plugged up on it. Yeah, Chevy, I put a motor in about three years ago. She's clattering now, so I got a warranty job. The V-Dub. Another Chevy, another junk Ford. I gotta get cranking. Pretty common here. You comb your hair? <laughs> it's pretty poofy today. Okay, she is done programming finally. We're gonna exit out of here. I'm gonna exit out of here. Let that shut up. I'm gonna go shut the key off. So I left the key off for a little bit. Now we're gonna hop back in uh, the scan tool here. And we're just gonna go in. We've got a, we've probably got a bunch of code set in a bunch of modules. Let me see when the inspection runs out. Okay, we're good. I didn't wanna clear any codes if the, uh, you know, if the inspection is due here. Whoa, easy there, click happy fella. We'll go to vehicle diagnostics. Uh, we'll go to vehicle DTC. This should do a full system scan, because sometimes when you program a module, it takes all the other modules offline, and then it'll set a host of codes in them. And you can clear them right from the programming screen, but sometimes it doesn't get them all. So I find it's best just to go in with a scan tool, you know, either this or you know, I'll tell or whatever you have, do a full system scan, kind of wipe all the codes out of it. And then I think just to be on the safe side, we're gonna go into the HVAC module or the remote control heater hoopty doopty, and we're gonna take and uh, just do an HVAC uh, relearn on that. Yes, yeah, so we got a bunch of codes here. Um, we can take a quick peek here and see what they are. Uh, some low voltage codes. Low voltage, low voltage. Yeah, these are all history codes. We're gonna take and clear everything out. So, uh, like I say, this car, they did say was sitting all winter. They didn't drive it for months and months and months because it's two wheel drive and they live out in the middle of nowheres, which is basically everywheres around here. So we're gonna clear all these out, all these low voltage codes pop back in to the HVAC module. So that's all done. We'll let it refresh here. And now we should have green, we got green checky boxes on everything, so that's good. No codes in the modules. And then we'll go back one more time. Go to modules. We'll find this remote control heater. We'll go to 
to configuration and reset. And we'll do the actuator learn process. We'll see what that's all about, just to make sure everybody's cool. There's some clicking and some snapping going on in there. Hey, what do you know? It's another YouTube. Turn ignition off and then back on. Let's see, turn that down so you can't hear that. Let's go to continue. Clear DTCs, it says. So let's see. We'll hit the back arrow. Uh, we'll go to see if we have any codes in it. No code stored, so it says it has no code, so fantastic. And that shouldn't have set codes in anything else. Now if we go on data display, we should see an update, not data display, ID information. We should see that we updated it today. There it is, so there's our new update. So that's good. I think this is the best we can do, folks. Um, back back out it did tell us to clear the codes but I'm assuming in this module I don't think we're gonna have set any codes in any other modules but that only takes a second to check so we will do that real quick like a bunny wasted way too much time on this today should have been working on something else but that's all right live and learn okay so no codes and nothing we're out of here. Make sure computer's not in the way there, it's got power supply. Should be able to come in here. I'm gonna take a look this little fella. So I'll make sure all the all the options work here. Roll her up on defrost. Yep. Roll her on the floor. Yep, it's blowing on the floor. Make sure we get the reset door. Yep, I can hear the change there. I just did hear some clicking and stuff when it was going through its recalibration, so I want to make sure there's not a mode door or anything that's going kind of wonky on it so I just wanted to run each one of the doors to their extreme yeah see I heard I just heard some clicking there let's see let's put it on the foot let's go back to hot yeah there's a little bit of clicking on the uh, hot cold door Yeah, sounds like some plastic getting ready to break. Awesome. I'm just gonna wait for this timeout, folks. Uh, it's already been almost five minutes and it's running pretty steady at the 168 milliamps. I know after 10 minutes it'll drop down. I do know prior to pulling the HVAC fuse out that I would see, like I said, I would see that 70 milliamp spike on top of whatever its normal draw was, waiting for it to time out or after it was timed out. So it's say at 170, go to 240, or it was sitting at 10 and would go to 80. Should I have fiddled with the aftermarket fuses over there and not have told you? No, I shouldn't have. That's what I should have done. Don't touch it, but I seen it and I had to touch it. Uh, the good news is though, I did find out what they went to, which was the aftermarket sunroof once I seen them running up. And being that that has no auto functions or anything funky on it, I'm assuming it is just a, you know, a full-time power and the 
uh, key on power. I'm not assuming I know that's what those two powers are. Uh, but I don't think that has any type of logic or anything that can really, you know, wake up and, and make any sort of draw. So I'm not super concerned uh, with that. It is quite interesting that this fit the criteria of that service bulletin, you know, almost to the T, almost exactly to the amount of amperage it was drawing. And then after removing that HVAC fuse and testing it, it, you know, our draw mysteriously went away and putting it back in, it didn't come back. So the only thing I could do at that point is update the HVAC module as suggested by the, you know, service bulletin. And then we wait, I'll give it back to the customer. Uh, let them know what we did, let them know that we you know, found this bulletin and so on and so forth. So let me know what you think and I wanna find you down in that comment section. The questions, the concerns you have, the Insty, the Facebook. You guys know what to do, I'm done telling you. Go down there and just remember viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.